back with another episode of Schooled Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about something that I'm sure many of our listeners, especially our lady listeners, can relate to. And that is the question of whether chivalry is dead and who killed it, if it is. A lot of debates have been had about that recently, especially with regards to the idea that younger adults, millennials, Gen Zers don't really understand chivalry at all. So I have asked one of our friends to the podcast to come back to help us answer this question. Her name is Lisa Velasquez. She is the founder of Lisa Talks Love, uh, where she is both a love coach, speaker, and what she calls a ladypreneur. She helps passionate single women get ready for the love they desire from a place of self-value. With her straight talk about love, Lisa has an intuitive gift for helping you unravel your heartbreaks and rewrite your love story. Lisa graduated from my alma mater, Columbia University, with a master's in clinical psychology and is both a certified sex therapist and certified sex educator, as well as a certified facilitator for preventing adolescent pregnancy. Her mission is to cultivate a community of women around the world who live well, date wise, and love sexy. Love that. Lisa, just tell us why you decided to do this work. Well, thank you, and I appreciate you welcoming me back to the school podcast. Hey, Nia. So, my goodness, the journey is long, but I will make it short. Um, I will say over the years, uh, briefly growing up, you know, discussing the conversation of virginity in a peer leadership group at the age of 15, I remember saying, well, I don't get why we save ourselves for them. They don't save themselves for us. And why should I let someone else to determine my value based on a behavior they get to engage in? And they're still seen as valuable. But if I engage in that, I'm not seen as valuable. I don't get it. I never got it. And, you know, even growing up from then and even being a woman today, it's that there gets to be equality in relationships and we don't get to have our value diminished because we engage in similar behaviors when we wanted to be treated as equal. Um, so I really wanted women to feel empowered in their relationships, empowered in their choices, and along the way just, you know, had a lot of friends come up to me over the years ask me for sex advice, ask me for relationship advice. And it wasn't that I was like this perfect person at all those things. It was that I always had an objective perspective. I was always very compassionate and nurturing. And I had a passion for supporting women to empower themselves and reconnect to their self-love. Because on this journey of equality and sexual empowerment and relationship empowerment, there were a lot of women coming to me for advice about how to, you know, have better sex or to do certain things sexually, but I recognized that what was really going on was they weren't feeling empowered in their relationship. Mm. They were trying to impress, trying to impress their partners. And I'm not saying you shouldn't want to spice things up sexually, but when I spoke with them and got to the core of what they were really asking me was they were trying to shift and stand out because of a lot of the arguments they were having, a lot of the petty competition with other women, when the person wasn't being loyal, uh, their partner wasn't being loyal to them. And at the time, they, they were with men. They were heterosexual women that were coming to me with their issues. And what I discovered was that, well, you know, your self-esteem, your lack of self-love is having you making, having you making these decisions. And you shouldn't be making decisions in this place. And let's talk about how you can be empowered and speak up in your relationship. How you can negotiate condom use because you want to use condoms and he doesn't. And you think you may be cheating. And aside from that, you think it's time maybe evaluate is the right is this the right person for you? And even if he's just the right now person, do you want the right now person to be someone that isn't treating you right and respecting, you know, your opportunity and your right to have, you know, so sex and feel right. so empowered. So it's really about supporting them to have empowered relationships. And that's where it started. You know, I got the degree, I have a clinical background. But from there, I realized I wanted women to have solutions to, you know, the issues they were going through in their relationship. And, you know, going to something in my own relationship previously, right before I became the love coach, right before I niche, I focused going through and healing from a relationship that I went through that ended, being a high-achieving woman and not respecting my own boundary because I couldn't see it because I was in the world of do, 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 and no, 
you know, a lot of us women are so accomplished these days and we're just trying to do our best to like achieve our goals. We can miss the mark in our relationship. Mm. And I had missed the mark of something of my own and recognize that, wow, I need to reestablish what my boundaries look like. You know, I was heartbroken. I was, I felt defeated. I felt exhausted. And I do remember that, you know, I sat down and, and processed because I was already a mental health practitioner by then. And I was like, well, what would I tell people that I work with to do? So I created a whole process um, to, you know, figure out where it all started and what shifted, what were the breakthroughs, what were the ahas. Where did I lose track of who I am? Where did I feel I lost myself? And I created something to actually heal myself because being a practitioner, I was able to combine my expertise and my experience and how I know how I communicate with women, what would work best for them. So having that experience, right, that personal deep experience and being an expert, I wanted people to understand not only can I help you because I'm an expert, I can help you because I've been through it and I was able to get myself out of it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we need that other person for perspective. So like I said, it was all about reconnecting to my self-value so I could get ready for that love I desire. And you'll never be ready to receive that when you are not connected to that part of yourself. And that's the work that I help women do, is very transformational work, to support them, to see themselves and honor who they are so they truly have what they want in their life. Absolutely. And that's a great segue into our topic today because it talks about the value, the value that we have for ourselves as well as the value that other people have for us and how we let other people treat us. And, you know, traditionally, I guess we'll go back to basics. Um, when it comes to chivalry, traditionally, chivalry by definition is a medieval concept, right? It's um, it's it's the it's a medieval knightly system with religious, moral, and social code. It's been become something that we identify with how our either men or partners treat another person, how much respect for they they have for that other person, and how they show that other person whether or not they're valued, and so. We are now in 2019, many, many, many centuries um, after medieval times, where even the idea of chivalry in the traditional sense has grown, evolved, or in some cases, according to some people, died. And I thought this was interesting because I have a lot of female friends who have a difficult time finding men who will just treat them with like common decency and respect. But then I also see my female friends sort of adapting and evolving to this as well. And maybe as a defense mechanism, rather not expecting too much so that you don't get hurt in the long run. And so that's why I wanted to do this episode. So um, one of the things we've heard, like a lot of things, we've heard that millennials have killed chivalry. And I don't necessarily know if that's true. I think personally, and from reading some research, what's happened is millennials just communicate and court and date differently. And so what might have been chivalrous 20, 30 years ago may be considered a little old school or taboo. What do you think, Lisa? I will say that millennials did not kill chivalry. Absolutely not. They did not do that. Um, I think that today chivalry has been killed over and over again. It resurrects sometimes. Um, and I find that there's a misconception of what chivalry is. Hmm. And that is the reason why it's being killed. And I will say this. So to me, chivalry is an honorable and polite way that men tend to behave towards women especially. Women, um, even their moms, their sisters, their, their friends they care about. When a man genuinely respects and honor women, he shows up this way, opening doors for them, helping them when they have to carry something heavy offering them help when they need it, Um, you know, and when you're dating, you will walk her to her door, walk her to her car, open doors for her, um, and and you will be honorable and polite and and praise her and and treat her well. And I believe that chivalry is very strong romantic etiquette. If we want to get on the dating side, it's very strong romantic etiquette that's grounded in honor and respect for women. And um, you can see this in same-sex couples as well. Anyone that tends to demonstrate more of a masculine energy in the relationship 
will be the te- will tend to be the more chivalrous person. Um, and I really think it's important to recognize that I personally, professionally believe that the reason why it's been killed or it's dead every now and then, because like I said, I believe it resurrects depending on the person. And there's just so many people that have misconceptions about it because a lot of men that I know, and I can give you a personal story, which is funny. This was probably in my early 20s. Yeah, it was my early 20s. And I went to dinner with uh, a potential love interest. I say that because I was still feeling him out, but he was very clear that he was interested in me. And we were friends for a very long time, but that's why I was very unsure. Okay. And I remember, yeah, I, that's why I was unsure, because I wasn't sure if I wanted to go there, but I was very open. Okay. And I just wasn't sure yet. So at the end of the date, um, you know, I was like, oh, you know, can you walk with me before you go to the train to my apartment? And he's, oh, no, you don't need me to walk you to your apartment. You're an independent woman. You got this. So, hmm. you know, Interesting. my spidey sense was like, wow. my spidey sense was like, ah, this is one of my a red flags for me. And I said, what do you mean I'm an independent woman? I can walk myself to my apartment. He said, well, like, you don't need me to do that. And I was like, but that's still, I was like, I don't need to be like weak or, you know, not self-sufficient for you to show me some, you know, chivalry and etiquette. Like, that's what a gentleman would do. Right. So a gentleman would walk me to my door. So you think because I'm independent and self-sufficient that I don't want you to walk me to my door. <laughs> and he was, so this is, this is a misconception that I see. Because women are able to pay their own bills, pay their own rent, you know, they have a career, whether they own a business or have a full-time job, you know, they're just self-sufficient human beings that aren't, you know, waiting for someone to save them that they don't need or deserve chivalry. Mm. That chivalry is only reserved for women who are not independent and that are, you know, allegedly desperately seeking a man to come save them or rescue them. And that's not what chivalry is about. Chivalry is about showing honor and respect to the women that you hold dear to you. So like I said, whether that is your mom, your sisters, your cousins, your aunts, your nieces, whoever, and the women you have a romantic interest in, right? You know, so if you really like someone, and I see this across the board, guys dating casually, and we'll get into this because you mentioned some of your girlfriends, when they're really, really casual about someone, there are a lot of men that will not demonstrate any kind of chivalry because they don't want her to think they're taking her seriously. Oh, gosh. The same ju- yeah. Find the same guy. And when a woman, he notices a woman he really wants to be with, he will bring that chivalry on 100. Hmm. So he wants you to see. So you can, you can. bring you in a higher regard. So you're saying a woman can tell whether or not a man is serious about her by how chivalrous he is in many cases. Well, I will say this. You can see it in a man. Like, men will shift it up. They will shift it up. As in, you know, I'll, I'll meet, I have a client that she's married now. Um, She dated and she liked to pay or whatever. She would do Dutch and I was never a fan of, having her I never enabled that behavior. That's a whole other story. So you'll be able to see the kind of person he is if you let him step up and do things. When she got married, her husband was a one hundred percent chivalrous from day one. Hmm. My point was he took he men tend to, not all men, but most men, and I'm saying this because you can have your friend come up to you saying, you know, he's just so casual, we go Dutch, he's not really chivalrous, but I like him. So I want to see where this goes because he has his life together. But I wish he was chivalrous. It doesn't work out. He goes to her. He disappears, whatever. Six months later, she sees him with a woman. He's pulling out her chair. <laughs> he's grabbing her coat. He's ordering her drinks. He's leaving with her. And he's holding on to her. All this stuff is going on. And your friend, right, is like, what the F? Right? Yeah. She's like, going on? Who is that guy? That is a guy that's ready, and he held his chivalry in his back pocket. Hmm. Now, I don't agree with that behavior. I don't agree with holding chivalry in your back pocket. You know, um, I think that, but that's a lot of what men do. 
So it's not all men, but there are a lot of men that do that. They will show up that way for a woman that honors herself, that doesn't put up with a lack of chivalry. And I will say that I am very fortunate that I attract very chivalrous men. When a man is not chivalrous, he is like, eh, I can't. I will always step away. And I've met men that are not chivalrous women at all, and when they're with me, they're extremely chivalrous. Interesting. And I'm not even dating those men. So it's really about how you're carrying yourself. You know, and I'm not saying that you deserve to not have chivalry if you're still unclear. But the difference is, is that when you are not settling for men that lack chivalry, that's when chivalry starts to show up when you honor the fact that you deserve it. So you have to pull back from putting up with people who don't want to show that to you. And apparently a lot of women, Mm -hmm. I was going to say, apparently a lot of women need to do this because in one poll, 80% of Americans say that women are treated with less chivalry today than in the past. That is the Washington Times poll on chivalry. And this uh, was published in an Odyssey article a couple years ago. But that's a lot of people, both men and women, feeling that our culture essentially is less chivalrous than it used to be. Of course, there's a lot of different factors that need to be taken into consideration. You mentioned earlier feminism, right? And and that's even nuanced because my form of... I can even add to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I was just going to say my form of feminism may not look like somebody else's feminism. And even if I am a feminist, does that mean I don't want a guy to be respectful and go out of his way to be courteous to me? Um, also, you know, we're living in an age of near instant connectivity. So we are always, you know, on our phones and, and we're able to connect with people in many different ways, really with just a swipe or a click. And I almost feel like in some ways that kind of gives you the illusion that there's always, always somebody better, always somebody on the other side of the screen. Perhaps that makes Mm -hmm. people you know, maybe that makes people appreciate those in front of them less. I'm, I'm sorry, what were you going to say, Lisa? I was going to add to that. I was going to name a few reasons why I believe it is that. I believe that women are too accessible. Mm. Um, I mm. think as a culture, we are way too accessible. You know, with millennials, and even Gen Z, there are a lot of people that are getting into these Instagram relationships where they're not even together, and then they break up on Instagram by, you know, I've heard... And I've seen that the the men will break up with them by posting a picture that they're with someone else. Yeah. And then the girl, they're actually with that girl in person. Yeah. So you, you're in an Instagram relationship, which is not even real. So you invested all of your emotions on, you know, in DM and Messenger. And then you, they ended with you by just showing you they're with another person with, in person, which just goes to show you that they really weren't serious, but they found someone that was serious about being in person. Now, it's really about not being this accessible, you know, teaching women and girls to not be this accessible, even in person. Like, don't get, don't run into or choose these last minute dates, these last minute hookups. That's the right. thing. Millennials are having less sex than any other generation. I know. <laughs> uh... Me, I will tell you what I believe is that is the reason I believe that is true is because they are not connecting in person. Yeah. Plus, they... They're not connecting in person to have sex, and they're, well, actual sex with a real person. They're not having, you know, the whole cyber sex, phone sex, sex thing, you know, sending people pictures. That's not sex. Right. That's not sex. So, so anyway, they're not getting together to have sex at all, so there's no real human connection. And the other side of that is when they do get together, they're not authentic about their feelings. Mm. Mm. They're, they're, they're never being honest about the way they feel about each other. That's actually going to connect them on a deep, intimate level. So everything is lukewarm when they're together. They're taking all these pictures, but they're not actually connecting. I think that's really what it is. It's like, I'm too cool to show you my feelings. And I think if you couple that with the fact that a lot of millennials are also more stressed than probably their parents were at this age and probably often overworked and underpaid and those who are getting together oftentimes are really just too tired. <laughs> but I think that's like... <laughs> I, that's a funny way to put it, right? Yeah. No, I, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's kind of a, an aside to this whole conversation. That's an aside, yeah. yeah. 
But you even said, like, there's, like, a lot of anxiety that they're dealing with, the stress they're going through, and the rejection factor. There's just, you know, so much of their lives are public. I don't blame them for the way they feel. I don't bash them. I, I get con- I'm concerned. Yeah. Because they don't deserve to feel this way. They, they really don't. And it's because their lives are so public, they're so afraid of public, you know, humiliation. I understand the public embarrassment they're afraid to go through because a lot of their relationships are so public and to go in so deep, it's scary for them because they don't know that territory. Um, because they would just, you know, like I said, if you're, you're growing up with a screen on your face all the time, you're not used to how to deal with those deeper human connections and they're still learning, you know, and they're learning in front of everyone. And that's where I feel like we've done the disservice as we you know, if you, well, you're not, you are a millennial, but people who have raised millennials, they did them a disservice putting them on screen time all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, um, didn't support them to have those interpersonal relationships that are deeper offline to help them be healthy enough to connect on a deeper level. Um, so that's what I wanted to say about that. I really don't blame them and I really feel like we need to, you know, care for them more when we talk about them in this instance. Yeah. And you know, I think the, the shifting in, more women, you know, decades ago, more women starting to go to college more and earn higher degrees and not have to depend on their husbands for income. That has sort of shifted this idea. So when you mentioned how that man you went out with said, I don't need to walk you to your car. You're an independent woman. And you're like, since when does that mean I don't want to be you know, treated with respect and treated just like you care, you know, but I also think Mm -hmm. that it sort of a lot of men did adopt that idea that women don't need us to act that way towards them. And then a lot of women sort of adopted it as well. And that's what I mean by adapting to the culture. I know a lot of women Mm -hmm. I know personally who have adapted and so they have learned not to expect that sort of behavior from men. Mm -hmm. And even a lot of times they're not even surprised when men don't act chivalrous anymore. And that is like really sad to me. But also you have to ask yourself, okay, so our gender roles are shifting in society. Maybe that means the idea of chivalry needs to shift as well. And not one that is only applicable to the behavior of men, but also women. Because if we're both treating each other, rather, with common courtesy and respect, for example, when you're talking about living our lives online, right? You you need look no further than social media to understand how chivalrous people are or are not in 2019. And if we can just sort of respect the dignity of a person's life more so than people seem to be doing now, I think we will be able to hold each other to a higher standard, whether you're in a same-sex relationship or a heterosexual relationship or a same-sex relationship. What do you think, Lisa? I really think that um, it does need to shift. And I feel like you know, we already know what ignites certain men to be chivalrous, but I would say for women who've adapted, stop lowering your standards. So, yeah. because to me, the other reasons why it's that is that besides women being too accessible, we've adapted by lowering our standards, and then a lot of us have become pursuing men. Mm-hmm. Pursuing men is not going to help you get someone to be chivalrous. It's actually the opposite. It makes men take a step back and say, oh, I don't got to do anything to get all the things I want. I can just sit back and let her do everything. Now, this is not necessarily because she's out earning him or has a better career. This just has to do with settling, as in I'm just going to be with him because he's there and I, I, I want to keep him around and I'm going to show him that I deserve to be here or he should be with me. And the, also, it's flossing that they don't need men. Mm-hmm. Now, this is, remember, it's not that you need to be needy and start behaving as if I'm not strong, I need a man. But when you're constantly flossing in a way that is, I'm not saying not being proud of your accomplishments, but constantly throwing the statement around that I don't need a man. But I would say let go of the idea that being independent has anything to do with not needing a man. Being independent and self-sufficient is just about being an adult. 
Right. That's all it's about. Right. So if you recognize it, don't attach that. I'm accomplished. I did this for me and I'm proud of myself. You know, versus like, I did all this without a man. It's like, what? That's, that's such an outdated thing to even think. Exactly. You know, um, because women that have been independent and educated have been like this since like the 70s. Right. The that I can remember what we could say. So what in the 60s, there was a revolution, but in the 70s, you know, women were really on their grind and doing their thing. It was more celebrated in the 90s. So, and that's when it was, you know, really happening. I'm a 90s girl. I'm independent. That was really more the campaign. But like I said, being self-sufficient was something that's been going on for years, way before millennials, way before Gen Xers. So I think it's really important to start looking at how we're showing up and what impressions we're giving the men. And then also, you know, how we're lowering our own standards. And I say this to women, this is not about blame. This is about your, you know, taking responsibility. Like I said, it's not about blame. Responsibility is about your ability to respond and take your power back in any situation you're in. Because what is happening is the choices that you're making that are having this happen. If you're with a man that's not chivalrous and you don't like it, don't be with him. You are not quarantined to be with this person. You are not assigned to him. You want to ask yourself, if you don't like it, what's making you stick around? And why do you think you deserve to be there? Because you don't. Mm. So you don't need to do that. Stop flossing it. And and men have too many options. That's the other side of things. When you're, we're too accessible. I don't know about that, Lisa. I, I feel like women also have too many options as well. I, I know that some... Ah. I know that some of my friends are just Tinder. You know, like I said, people are just a swipe or a click away. And I think it has really shifted the mentality of people and how they approach. So like, listen, not everybody wants to be in a monogamous relationship. Get that. I'm not talking about those people. And not everybody wants to be married. Get that too. However, if you just want to simply meet somebody that you're compatible with and that you can actually have a conversation with and that is not going to disappear several weeks or several months from now, then you have to stop treating them like they're disposable. And I really feel oh, like... I agree with that 100%. Yeah, and I really feel like the... Listen, online dating can be great. I know a lot of people have found partners that way. You know, people have gotten married as a result of that. But I think the downside is that it causes you to believe and to start to treat people like they are disposable, which in essence is treating them like they're not even human. Yes, and I agree with that. But I would say this, for the topic of chivalry, the women that are complaining about the lack of chivalry are not the ones who are complaining about too many options. Yes. <laughs> the women that are complaining about that, they're not. Yeah. And that's why I address that the men have too many options because women are the ones complaining about the lack of chivalry. Yeah. And if men are complaining about the other side of that, it's like, I want to be chivalrous, but I'm like, well, you can be chivalrous. Mm-hmm. No one's stopping you. Now, if a woman is saying, oh, I don't need that, you can simply say, hey, I just, you know, want to be a gentleman and, you know, treat you like a lady. I like you. And, you know, and her response to that can either be well received. And if she doesn't like it, maybe she's not the woman for you. But that does not mean you need to stop being chivalrous. It's the same thing I tell the women. If they're not expressing chivalry, then maybe you don't need to be investing your time there if they don't respect you for what it is you need and want. And if the man is expressing chivalry and she doesn't want it, maybe she's not the woman for you because she doesn't want to receive the love and etiquette that you're providing. Yeah. You look at it both ways. You can't force things on people. But if they don't want, if they want to receive it, beautiful. If they don't want to receive it, you got to reevaluate where you're investing your time and your heart. So chivalry, not dead, but maybe on life support. <laughs> maybe on life support. And I have a couple ways I'd like to share that how you can reignite it. So I would tell the ladies that are listening, you know, if you want to reignite chivalry, ask men for help. Find ways to engage them. I always tell my clients when they're having issues communicating with men because, like, they're getting back on the dating scene. I tell them, like, don't save your, your questions and your inquiry for dates. How about you go to the supermarket and when you go to Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or wherever you shop, just ask, you know, can you help me with something? Look him in the eye, smile, buy something with you. I don't care if you knew what the stuff was. Start practicing chivalry and, you know, practicing being open to receiving chivalry, receiving support. Because that's really what it is. It's helpful and helps you out. Someone supports you. Someone provides for you. And 
not financially. This is just about a little bit of help, picking up a heavy box, finding something you're looking for in a particular aisle. And this really breaks the ice. And I find women find this a lot of the time when they're very high performing, extremely independent. They get, they cringe. They get frustrated because they're so used to doing everything on their own. And those are a lot of women that are very uncomfortable with receiving chivalry. So ask for some support. And don't forget to receive that support. Don't try to correct them and tell them what it really is. Just say thank you when he helps you look him in his eye and keep it moving. You know, and stop stating how independent you are to someone's face. Your independence, it just is what it is. You don't have to keep announcing it every five minutes. You know? Absolutely. I mean, you don't have to downplay it either. You don't have to pretend you're not independent. But you don't have to make announcements all the time. I find that, that I find that to be obnoxious. I mean, I get it. You're independent. You don't have to tell me. So there's the, and stop pursuing men. Um, really stop pursuing men and, and stop investing in men that make no time or effort for you. They're not going to invest in you when you double down on investing in them. It doesn't work like that. Um, you are being masculine in the sense that you are being in do mode. When you want to receive from a man, you have to be in feminine mode and you have to receive. So you have to give the space by stepping back in order for them to, to give to you by allowing yourself to receive. I see this all the time. I see myself receive chivalry and I see women two feet from me not getting it from the same guy. Because if I'm stepping back and receiving, I'm not in do mode. And I see the woman in do mode. Don't be in do mode if you want to receive. And that's very important. It's, it's, these are small shifts, but they can give you huge results and changes in your love life when you're looking to have chivalry. And I mean this with anyone. You can do this with, you know, the men in your life who you're not dating, your relatives, your friends. And I, and that way you work that muscle so you're able to connect with men on a romantic level and be ready. It's like a pre-workout, like a pre-game. <laughs> when you're actually going to connect with, yeah, connect with a man that you have a romantic interest in. Absolutely. Wonderful advice. Lisa, thank you so much. I want to call you Dr. Lisa. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I'll just stick to Lisa for now. Lisa, where can folks find you online and on social media? Oh, you can definitely engage with me on Instagram. I'm always open. You can shoot me a DM. I'm at Lisa Talks Love. That's one simple handle. And if you'd like to work with me, you can reach out to me at lisatalkslove.com forward slash love breakthrough. We can take a look at where you are in your love life, where you want to be, and how I can support you. And one more thing, if you are looking to do something on your own, if you're not ready for private coaching, I created a great course called Level Up Your Love Life, a 10-day challenge for the soulful boss lady ready to align with her love goals. And you can find that at lisatalkslove.com forward slash level up. Awesome. Thank you, Lisa, so much for joining us for another very insightful conversation. Of course, everybody listening, you can stay engaged with Schooled Podcast on social media as well. We are on Instagram and Twitter at Schooled Podcast, and we're also on Facebook. Just search S-K-O-O-L-E-D and you will find us. Thank you for listening. Bye.